Welcome everyone. This is Eliane Ramos. I'm ERB Goddess on Twitter, and I'm going to be your host for the next hour or so. And after tonight, I want to make sure that we keep this conversation going on Twitter using hashtags LGBTQ Latinos, Get Covered, and Asegurate. So tonight we're going to be discussing the situation that the LGBTQ community faces, uh, particularly within the Latino community. And with me I have a couple of panelists who are truly um, icons in the LGBTQ rights fight um, in the whole country. Um, first, I'm going to start with um, somebody who needs really no introduction. Um, and of course, I'm talking about Dolores Huerta. Uh, Dolores is a, a true Latina hero. She's a leading voice in the civil rights and labor movements in the country. Along with Cesar Chavez, she co-founded the United Farm Workers of America. Um, and she's now the president and founder of the Dolores Huerta Foundation. Uh, and the start of the latest round of commercials for the uh, Freedom to Marry campaign. Uh, and we're going to be talking about that campaign in a little bit. Um, also with us is a good friend of Dolores, Laura Esquivel. Laura is the, the mother of the Latino gay rights in this country. Um, Laura is a Harvard graduate. She's the former vice president for the Gay and Lesbian Victory Fund. Uh, she's also currently a commissioner for the Maryland Civil Rights Commission and a board member of the National Latina Institute for Reproductive, Reproductive Health. Um, Bienvenida, Laura. Along with Dolores and Laura, we have Sergio Lopez, who is a uh, season campaign organizer and a media strategist for Latino media, and he's the director of Latino programs at Freedom to Marry. Hi, Sergio. And last but not least, we have Gautam Rag Ragaban. And I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Gosta is the public engagement advisor at the White House, focusing on LGBTQ issues, and he has a long history on work working on these kind of issues. So I want to welcome all of you to our chat. Um, and we're going. To, we don't have. Um, we're not gonna spend too much time in, in um, you know, the, the periphery because we have a lot of things to discuss. So let's go right into the questions. Um, as all of you know, the LGBTQ community is makes up a sizable portion of the Latino population. As a matter of fact, there's a report, uh, a 2013 report by the UCLA Williams Institute that found that there's almost 1.5 million of Latinos uh, in the United States who consider themselves lesbian, gay, bisexual, or transgender. Uh, so we have a large amount of people who may be less visible, but who are facing some unique circumstances in our community. Not just in the um, LGBTQ community, but in the Latino community as well. So my first question is, can you talk a little bit more about these kind of issues and the things that our community uh, the LGBT um, brothers and sisters are facing in the country. Who wants to take it up? Can you guys hear me? Yeah, sure, I'll go. Um, this is Laura. Um, well, you know, everybody knows about marriage and that LGBT people aren't allowed to marry each other in most of the states in, in this country. But there are really a lot of issues way beyond that. Marriage affects a small percentage of the LGBT community. Um, issues like poverty and homelessness, uh, you know, violence against LGBT people, particularly transgender people, and discrimination in other areas like employment and housing. In the majority of states in this country, you can get fired because you're LGBT and there's no protection for that. So there, there's a whole range of issues beyond, beyond marriage. Access to, um, to health care, um, you know, to culturally competent health care. Um, you know, incarceration and immigration detention. LGBT people in immigration detention face horrific conditions. 
We're going to be talking a little bit more about the immigration issue. Um, any any other issues that you see? Um, any of you? Well, I think that uh, this is Dolores Huerta. I also, you know, we look over the past few years, we actually have seen a number of um, murders and beatings of uh, LGBT youth. Uh, some, some of those happened here in, in the state of California, actually. But we had a young man uh, in Oxnard, California. In, in, I believe he was in either middle school or freshman in high school, was actually shot uh, by a, a schoolmate just because and he was a young Latino, by the way, because he liked to dress up and you know dress up like a girl. And uh, a fellow student actually just came and, and shot him, killed him. Uh, shot him, you know, be, behind his back, and uh, so I, I think that a lot of this goes on. We still see a lot of bullying, even though we, there mm -hmm. are laws that have been passed in California. Uh, we have a law that was passed against bullying, but we know that that still happens, and and we have a lot of resistance in a lot of the school boards uh, to implement uh, the laws against bullying. So we still see that happening, and I think. Uh, uh, we recently passed a transgender law uh, in California. I'm on the Board of Equality California, by the way, and uh, our organization was one of the main uh, pushers of this law. Uh, Tom Amiano, our, uh, he is uh, one of our gay uh, legislators, a very great leader, by the way, in the gay community. Um, and we passed this law that uh, high school kids could choose the bathroom of their choice. And uh, just uh, our local school board uh, the, the man who was chairing the school board meeting right after this law was passed said that he was not going to enforce it, that he didn't care what the governor, Jerry Brown, said or what the state legislature of California. They were just simply not going to enforce it. Uh, so we packed the next school board meeting uh, with supporters of the LGBT community. Uh, uh, they were also uh, gathering signatures uh, to try to put uh, uh, something on the ballot to do away with this new law. But guess what? Just on February the 24th, just a few days ago, it was announced that they failed to get the necessary signatures, which is a great relief for everyone uh, because that means that uh, uh, we don't have to spend tons of money to defend it. So that was good. But I, I think we, all across the board, we can see that especially our youth are still uh, suffering a lot uh, just because of the fact that they're, they're gay, lesbian, or transgender. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and some of you have been in the in this fight for this community for many many years. Um, Laura, for example, you you are considered the the la madre the Latino gay rights in this country. Um, um, so you even got to speak to Cesar Chavez when he was still alive about the the situation for Latino um, gays and, and lesbians. Uh, so you know how historically Latinos have been you know thought of as being more conservative than the rest of the population in, in regards to issues like gay rights and, and such. Uh, and, and many people cite Proposition 8, 25 in, in California as one of the, you know, the perfect examples of how the community is so conservative about this. Do you find that that's still the case nowadays or are Latinos evolving just like the rest of the country seems to be evolving? Well, actually, I would say that that's never been the case. Uh, one of the things that we have had to contend with is the conventional wisdom that communities of color are more homophobic than other communities. And that is based on stereotypes about, um, you know, Latinos being Catholic and muy machos. And more importantly, on the fact that we were not being included in any of the polling that was being done. You know, the pollsters would say, well, this is what the country thinks about LGBT issues. This is what people think. So what people? You know, what Latinos did you poll? What? And they, they just weren't doing that. And um, they really were not investing money in doing outreach to the Latino community because they'd already decided that it was not worth their time. When we finally started insisting on having Latinos oversampled in polls and doing polling ourselves, we found what I always thought to be true. Latinos are more progressive on every issue across the board, whether it is gay rights, um, uh, living wage, the environment, they're more progressive than any other groups, even Catholics. The only group of Latinos that are not progressive in that way or accepting in that way are the, you know, the fundamentalists, the Baptists, you know, people in those really 
really religious denominations, but that's true across the board, not just for Latinos. So uh, Latinos certainly get kicked out of their homes. Of course they do. But there's also a real emphasis, and Sergio can talk more about this. There's a real emphasis in the Latino community on familia. You know, I came out when I was 14, and my mother's a Mormon, and my mother went to Mormon church and talked about, you know, I, I was her daughter and I was a lesbian, and she knew the church didn't approve, and that's too bad because era mi mamá. So, you know, I, I think there's a, always been a lot more acceptance than people have given us, us uh, credit for. For example, Cesar Chavez and Dolores Huerta, they were allies in the 80s, like way before it became cool like it is now, you know, and safe like it is now. You know, they were some of the first national leaders to come out in support of LGBT rights. I think I have to go back to the 60s on that one, Laura. <laughs> but I just want to say, I think that the difference that has been made in the polling, actually, that was done in California uh, early on, did show that there was a definitely discrimination of, uh, in the Latino community. But the, what has really, really helped a lot is going door to door. Equality California has uh, people on the ground, uh, you know, field organizers, um, also the Courage campaign. And I actually uh, have had the, the pleasure to go door to door with them and in the Latino community and just talk to, uh, to Latino families and uh, I think that has made a tremendous amount of difference in the Latino community and we still have to remember Laura that the Catholic Church uh, as an institution has been one of the biggest contributors mm -hmm. uh, to some of these anti-gay uh, you know like here in California Proposition 8 along with the Mormon Church mm -hmm. so uh, we still have a long way to go in terms of the institutional church and, and we still you know we still have priests out there that are talking from the pulpit uh, and about anti-gay and anti-choice issues in terms of women's rights also. So I think that it's important that we as Latinos, and I think it's important uh, what you mentioned, uh, Laura, about Familia and Sergio, uh, all of you, because uh, I think that's a, that's a point that we have to get across. Uh, I have had many, many people uh, comment uh, to me about the commercial that you had me do about um, Nuestra Familia, that our LGBT uh, youth are part of our family and we need to protect them but I've had many many comments and I've even had people come up to me and say that because of that commercial they actually came out to their families uh, so that shows you like the power of, of the media and uh, all of the great work that all of you are doing nice nice well no we certainly are living in a, in a time of unprecedented progress in, in the community you know I, I we have seen President Obama embracing marriage equality. We have seen a dozen of states now who, who um, allow same-sex couples to wed. Uh, we see sports figures coming out and celebrities, and, and like you mentioned, even the Pope uh, speaking out for respect for the community. Um, you know, we had the example of yesterday. You know, the the, the amazing bit of news um, that the federal judge in Texas struck down the, the ban on same-sex marriage, um, saying that it was unconstitutional. We saw Jane Brewer um, vetoing SB 1060. Um, so, so we see the public support growing, and, and millennials are also the, the most um, open and accepting generation in, in the country's history. So I have two questions. How close are we to true full equality? for the LGBTQ community, and, and what role do you think the, the youth, the millennials, are going to have in, in taking that cause further? I can't hear you. Sergio? Oh, oh, I, can, I, can, I can go. Can, can you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah we can. can. I think yeah. you need head, uh, headphones, Captain. Uh, so we are. So we're actually. Re I think we're close to winning the freedom to marry. Currently, uh, we have 17 states where people um, have the freedom to marry, plus Washington D.C. Um, you know, and it does seem or appear that every week or every month we have a new uh, judge or a legislature that passes the freedom to marry, which is really fantastic. Uh, but the new target states are really states that have a large, significant Latino population. So we want to make sure that the Latinos in a particular state are engaged and know that this is something that they can participate in and this is something that our families will participate uh, will benefit from. Eliane, earlier you mentioned that there are, um, that the Williams Institute um, 
released a report and it showed that there are 1.5 million um, LGBT Latinos. Um, in that report, there's also um, over 146 Latino same-sex couples. Mm -hmm. And nearly 30% of those same-sex couples are raising children, um, which is, you know, once the state recognizes your marriage, there are, like, you know, fundamental rights that you get when your state um, um, recognizes marriage. Um, so we definitely want to continue to, um, you know, win um, the freedom to marry all over the country. We do feel eventually that the Supreme Court will hear a case and they'll decide in our favor. But in the meantime, we want to, um, like I said, win more states. We also want to grow the majority for marriage. Uh, we have a goal here at Freedom to Marry to have 60% of Americans um, support the Freedom to Marry by 2016. Uh, we also want to create that environment and that climate for um, elected officials and for judges to rule the right way and rule in our favor. And thirdly, we also want to end um, federal marriage discrimination. Uh, we want to repeal the rest of the of DOMA, the Defense of Marriage Act. Um, but having said that, um, youth um, across the board are incredibly supportive of LGBT issues. Um, I think for many of them, it's a no-brainer. Um, they don't see why it's a really big issue, but we just want to make sure that they're engaged and um, you know that they're heard as well. It's important that you know we um, elect individuals or elect officials that um, support our cause. Mm -hmm. No, I de definitely um, agree with you, and in, in hopefully this is where the country is moving towards right now. Um, Sergio, I'm going to continue with you now. I, I have a question for you. Your, your organization, Freedom to Marry, recently launched the Familia is Familia campaign. Um, and, I, and I'm going to show a little video about it, um, but, but I want to come back to you so you can talk to me more about the work that that um, Freedom to Marry is doing and what the Familias Familia campaign is about. Um, so let me, give me a little second here to show one of the videos from the campaign. And um, as you can see, it stars Dolores Huerta. Mm -hmm. uh, um, give me one second. It's going to take a second. If you want, Sergio, you can start explaining um, while this is loading. Yes, definitely. So Familia es Familia is a national public education campaign um, supported, created by Freedom to Marry with a lot of help from Lara Esquivel and Ingrid Duran and Talia Zapatos and Catherine Pino. Uh, and it essentially is a program to get Latino families to support LGBT Latinos and start having these conversations. Um, I think we have many instances where, you know, our moms tell us that our uncle has a roommate and they've been roommates for 10 years and after a while you think, well, you know, are they just, they've been roommates for a really long time, um, mm -hmm. they might be more than roommates. So we just want to make sure that Latino families are um, having these conversations about mm -hmm. their family members. We're also sponsor, um, partnering with over 20 national Latino organizations all over the country. Um, and so we do trainings. I actually did my first training last year in Lorain, Ohio, uh, which was fantastic, to about, about 50 Latinos who attended. And it was a really, really great training. And it's, it's really nice to be out in the field. Um, and I think you sometimes take for granted living in Washington, D.C. or living in big cities how supportive the LGBT community is, but when you get out there into rural America, you know, it's not as supportive. So we just want to make sure that we're out there and we're doing our part to help out the community. Um, can, can I just say well? one other thing? That because of the polling, what Familias Familia has done is created messages that have been tested that resonate with Latinos. Latinos are very low-hanging fruit on this issue. The problem is, like Sergio said, we don't talk about it. And so creating those safe spaces for Latinos to have those discussions has a profound impact and, um, you know, makes change very quickly, As but we have to provide the, the spaces for people to talk about it. That's certainly the truth. Um, um, let me play the video really quick so that people understand what we're talking about, and then in 30 seconds we come back, and I want to talk to Dolores about her experience on the campaign. Yeah, I saw that. I talked to my family members who are gay and lesbians. No person gay or straight should have to face any kind of discrimination where they live, where they work, or when they want to marry the person that they love. 
Same-sex couples, you know, they have the protections of marriage. It's discrimination. They don't have the freedom to marry like everybody else does. Familia is familia. Okay, um, and so Dolores, you're, you're um, talking, such an icon in the Latino community. You're a tireless fighter for civil rights and, and whatever the social justice needed, you are there. Uh, so what made you decide to join the Freedom to Marry campaign? Why is this such an important message for our community right now? Well, as we said before, we still face a lot of discrimination and uh, these are issues that we need to talk about, and we also have to uh, give them the, the vocabulary, we have to give them the conversations, uh, give them the, the tools uh, so they can discuss these issues, because as you all know that uh, sex in the Latino, traditional Latino community and uh, family, they just don't even talk about sex at all. And so when you take it a step further and you talk about uh, the issues of uh, gay marriage or lesbian marriage, uh, then it, you know people don't even know how to address the issue. And one of the slogans that I use, and I'm glad to see that other people are down uh, copying me in that, is I, I use uh, what Benito Juarez said, our uh, uh, Mexican president, uh, the first uh, president of Mexico, who said, el respeto al derecho ajeno es la paz, respecting other people's rights is peace. And, uh, uh, and people, I know that they're repeating that, so it makes it a, a comfortable way so that people can, can address this issue. And uh, anyway, I know that the uh, video has been seen, I mean, because the commercial has been seen by many, many people. As I said before, people come up to me all the time and they talk to me about it. And some of them, as I said, have even told me uh, that it's helped them come out. And I think coming out is so important. Although I'll, I, it, I know it's scary. I have spoken to young people who have told me have, that they were put out of their homes uh, once that they came out. So it's something they have been beaten up sometimes uh, by members of their family when they came out. And I know it's a very, very scary issue for them, but on the other hand, that's the only way that we can really ensure uh, that you know, that we get these families committed, uh, because once they understand it's a member of their family, somebody that they have to cherish, and somebody that they have to love and protect. Mm -hmm. there's, there's certainly a lot of sides to, to the LGBTQ, um, the, the issues that the community faces, and, and we mostly have been hearing only about one side of the whole issue lately, which is marriage equality, um, both pro and against. There's people who are very adamant against it and people who are, uh, you know, uh, in, in support of. And it seems to be a divisive issue even within the LGBTQ community. So what is your position about this? What, what, do, what are your thoughts on this? Well, I think that we have to work very hard and we have to continue working. And what I try to do is every time I make a talk, whether it's on labor, women's issues, the environment, immigration, I include the message about LGBT uh, e uh, equality. And I think that's what we have to do and get other people to do the same thing. And if we just, you know, keep it out there, talk to our friends, and they say give them the tools so that they can have this discussion, I think it can go a long way to making sure that we eventually are going to end this discrimination. I think we're actually getting really close to the tipping point. You know, we know that we have all these laws in all these states that they're introducing right now on so-called religious freedom, and we're happy that Arizona finally did the right thing and vetoed that law uh, that had already passed their legislature. Uh, so I think we just have to be engaged, you know, engaged in every way that we can be, whether it's with, for donations uh, to the organizations, uh, to participate in actions, uh, and anything that we can do. I was very blessed because I knew um, I knew some of the original people. I knew Harvey Milk. I uh, actually campaigned oh, wow. in his campaign when he was running for supervisor. And uh, I remember when he was killed, he and George Moscone. And by the way, I just want to say that I just had the good fortune to meet uh, uh, um, Matthew Shepard's parents at the recent uh, uh, convention that I spoke at for the youth, uh, for the human rights campaign in, in Nevada. Wow. And that was really a big thrill. And also Ellen DeGeneres' mother, I got to meet her. So, uh, and again, I, I think it helps when a lot of our celebrities come out and, and really support uh, uh, gay rights. Mm -hmm. and, and, and beyond the equality, because I think that is, that is usually, um, you know, uh, focus on, on marriage equality, but uh, should the discussion really be about marriage equality or should it be about simply equality in human rights? No, it's got to be about human rights because as Laura mentioned earlier, it's not just that focus on, on marriage. It's, and that, 
my organization of the organization I belong to, Equality California, that was a you know, um, and there was a big discussion about that. Do we just talk about marriage? Do we talk about all of the other discriminations? And uh, so, you know, so we decided, no, we've got to talk about all these other discriminations. And that's been so good because we've been able to pass about six major pieces of legislation uh, in, in California uh, in, in different levels of discrimination that we have. Now, the, the guys have been a little quiet here. So I'm going to throw them in a couple of questions. Um, Gautam and, and Sergio, the Zoom thing, um, you know, you have to speak up a little bit more. Um, beyond equality, what are the more pla practical implications of a victory in the right to marriage? Um, because it's not just getting the, the act of getting married, it's all of these legal things that go with that. Um, so can you talk a little bit about that? Either one of you. Oh, God, 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 we can't hear you. I can't hear you. Yeah, we, we cannot hear you. Yeah, okay. well, I think, you know, in the LGBT, I'll take this question in so um, Gotham can chime in. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, you know, and then, you know, it's not just about marriage, but it's obviously in a, in a, it's important to us for freedom to marry, very, very important. Um, but there's other issues that affect the LGBT community too, like we said earlier, bullying. The Employment Non-Discrimination Act, um, ENDA, where um, in many states it's still legal for someone to be fired simply because they're LGBT, uh, which is really terrible and it's like something that we have been fighting for in the community for a really, really long time and we want Congress to act you know, as soon as possible on something like that. Um, bullying, uh, you know, is um, two years ago or a year ago I was really big in the news because there was a lot of LGBT kids who were committing suicide because you know bullying was uncontrollable, it was really terrible, um, the schools weren't doing anything um, and it, it's been, you know, there's a lot of issues that we need to overcome in the LGBT community and work on um, together and support each other and make sure that we're on message and that we're on point um, and also get, you know, obviously our allies um, on board, you know, Studies say that you know we we, we make up 10% of the population. Um, that is simply not enough. You know, in order for us to um, get something or legislatively, we have to work with our allies. We have to build coalitions. We gotta make friends. We gotta, I mean, you know, really, really work on these issues to make sure that we're heard. To make sure that you know we get people on our side. Um, so it's 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 difficult, but I definitely think it's doable. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now we. Uh, do you wanna do you wanna say something with him? I I don't know. I don't know that his microphone is working properly. Um anyway, let, let's continue and then he can Gotham you can always chime in after. Don't worry about it. This is I, I want this to be like an open conversation, so feel free to jump in and out whenever you need to. Um, let, let's talk about what almost happened yesterday. We saw that um, in Arizona, the SB 1062, that, uh, you know, we missed it by a hair. Um, the, the fact that Jan, Jan Breuer, um, you know, decided to veto it was a, was a victory for the rights. But there's the fear that um, some of these laws are going to continue popping up around the country. Um, so my, my question is this, what can we regular citizens do to prevent this kind of laws from, from passing? It, we're lucky that we, we kind of found out about the, what was happening in Arizona because the, the mainstream media started to pay attention to it. But there are times when these kind of laws pass and nobody pays attention and they're able to get away with this kind of thing. So what can we do as citizens to prevent this from happening? Well, I, I feel like you need, you know, we as citizens, we do have the responsibility to um, be informed and see what the legislature is up to. Um, and it's also engagement. You know, there were thousands, giant, you know, Governor Brewer received thousands of signatures from people, not just in Arizona, but all over the country who um, want her to veto the bill. We, um, you know, the business community also was very engaged in Arizona. There was talks that the Super Bowl might pull out of Arizona next year. Um, you know, Arizona gets a lot of um, tourists, and you know they hold major events. And there was, you know, talk that a lot of these events were not going to be held there. That you know, companies were not going to build a factory in there. Um, you know, a lot of businesses, you know, 
sent the governor letters, um, letting letting them letting her know that they were not comfortable with it. This is something they did not support, and this is something that would have prevented them from you know doing business within the state. And at the end of the day, you know, money talks, and um, jobs are really important in every state. And you know, I'm sure that factored in into um, Governor Brewer's decision to um, veto the bill. But um, you know, I do think that you know, make sure that we're um, informed and you know, let our legislators know that this is something that we do not support, and it's it's not good for the state, it's not good for the economy, it's not good for our schools. Um, so. You know, I think you know, as long as we're informed and we're organized, I think we have a good shot to make sure that none of these legis legislative um, bills pass. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think that's the key. Um, what Sergio just said, it's uh, being organized and taking action. And I really think that uh, maybe folks will agree on uh, that we uh, we do have a lack of organization for our Latino LGBT community. Uh, we don't have enough organization, I think, nationally. Uh, I'm glad that we do have uh, Freedom to Marry, I Call California, Courage Campaign, HRC, uh, uh, GLAD, and all these other organizations. But I think we do need an organization for uh, our Latino uh, community in terms of LGBT, but so that they can also be informed when these things are happening. I think we're fortunate because you know we're there and and we can find out what's going on. But a lot of our folks don't have that information and are not able to really engage. And, and I, the whole thing in Arizona, when you think about uh, economic sanctions, which that was basically what it was like. It was like people were threatening again to boycott Arizona. And, but and so I, I think that's uh, very, very important that we keep that in, in mind uh, in terms of what economic sanctions we can take uh, when it's, whether it's corporations or uh, individuals or uh, states, you know, that we can uh, take out that boycott uh, card and say, hey, we're ready to boycott you if you're going to uh, promote uh, uh, this type of hatred uh, against any community. Mm -hmm. And who, who better to listen to than Dolores? I mean, you, you, but the work that you have done over the course of your of your life has been unbelievable. And so, uh, you know, we we look to you for for pointers as to how to how to make these things happen. So um, we we continue to learn from you every time. Um, well, and I then, <laughs> so at, at this, I think at this point, uh, I have to just uh, applaud all of the leaders of the LGBT community. I have to applaud you uh, because you were able to make this happen in such a major way. Uh, when you're able to bring in the American Airlines and Southwest Airlines and all of these major, major uh, corporations to come in and step in immediately uh, to keep this uh, bill from taking place, I mean, that really shows uh, that there's a tremendous amount of organization, that a lot of work that's been done, and, and now it's paying off. Nice. Yes. Ed, can you hear me now, or no? Yes. Yeah, we can hear you. Uh, yes. Success. <laughs> uh, sorry about that. Well, to, to answer this question, I think also to, to uh, bring it back to the last question, I think the most important thing is that as a community, we have to keep vigilant, right? Um, you know, I think back to um, when the president gave his uh, inaugural address last year, and he talked about um, you know, Seneca, Seneca Falls and Selma and Stonewall, right, which was a phrase that a lot of us felt very strongly about. Um, but we, when we think about those movements, right, the movement for, for women's rights and for, uh, for civil rights, we're not done in those fights just yet. So I think it's very easy for people to think that, yes, we got a great Supreme Court ruling in Windsor, and so now we have marriage equality in some places, and so our work is done. Um, and so I, I worry about, this is I think what keeps us up at night, is um, that people will, will think that we're done and that they won't pay attention to these things that are happening at the state and local levels. So uh, to bring that all back together, um, you know, I think it's a real opportunity for us to go back to basics, right? To go back to employment and health care and housing and not just how are we, how are we, what are we doing to take care of our young people, but what are we doing to take care of our aging population as well? We have a large population of LGBT elders who may lack some of the family support structures that um, that younger folks have. So there's a lot of work left to do. And so I, I think to, to answer you both of those questions, uh, what I worry about is that we, um, that, that folks are just going to think that we're done. Mm -hmm. Certainly, certainly. And, and I mean, there's, like you mentioned, there's so many things that, that are related to this. So it's not just a one-sided issue, for sure. Um, and, and, and speaking of, of that, um, you know, we, we certainly cannot talk about 
uh, the LGBTQ um, issues and rights if we don't talk about immigrant issues uh, because they're so interrelated. So how would immigration reform or the lack of immigration reform affect this population in particular? Well, I'll take a, a quick response. Since I'm um, both gay and an immigrant myself, I was born in India. My family immigrated in the in the 1980s. So, I, I mean, I, there's there's so many ways in which our communities intersect, right? Um, obviously, there are so many LGBT immigrants themselves. We have, um, I mean, we, we think about what's happening in in across the world. We have asylum seekers and refugees who are LGBT. We have um, so many LGBT dreamers who are just looking for a chance to succeed in this country. Um, you know, I think uh, what's what I've seen happen is that there's been um, some decrease of interest in immigration reform in the community because of the DOMA ruling. So at least for many binational same-sex couples, they now have the opportunity to get married and, and a petition for immigration benefits. But that is not the end of the of the battle for us, right? We have a lot of work left to do. So um, I think it's important that we look at immigration reform as one of our fights too. Mm -hmm. Sergio and Dolores. Well, I think, I think we. That's I think, I think we, we lost Laura. Go ahead, Dolores. Yeah, I think it's extremely important, as I said before, I think if all of our communities come together, uh, that's how we're able to make these uh, these uh, changes. And, you know, we still have a lot of uh, racism in our society, unfortunately. And so uh, when we think of, uh, uh, again, talking about Arizona, all of the laws that they have passed against uh, uh, immigrants, and, um, and, and yet, you know, we didn't see the type of response uh, uh, that we say we saw to this law recently, and in a way that's kind of hurtful. Uh, and I can say the same thing too. Uh, being a feminist, and I'm on the board of the feminist majority, and we see all of these laws that they've been passing against women, like what they did in Texas. You know, where they passed uh, uh, get, getting rid of all of these clinics for uh, for women uh, for, where women can do family planning, or they have the right to an abortion if they uh, need it. Uh, and uh, and yet we don't see the same kind of response from the corporations uh, that we saw. Uh, for in Arizona uh, against this bill, I know uh, it, and maybe again, it maybe it's lack of organization on our part. Uh, I don't know, but um, it it looks like we we really have to come together more and work together more uh, directly uh, so that we can take some of these other major issues off the table on immigration reform. As you all know, uh, you know, we all we we're trying to get a vote uh, yesterday uh, here in Bakersfield. We had the people that were fasting in Washington. Uh, Rudy Lopez, one of the fasters who fasted for 22 days, and, and OJ, the, the other young man uh, that came, and they fasted for 22 days there in Washington, D.C. Well, they came to Bakersfield yesterday, and all day long, it started at 8 o'clock in the morning, we had press conferences, and uh, we had demonstrations on our congressman, Kevin McCarthy, uh, who's the whip of the Republican Congress, and uh, community did, uh, luncheon, and a community uh, rally last night, and and you know it's like you know pushing a, a rock up a hill, a boulder up a hill, uh, to try to get some traction and some support for immigration reform. And uh, it, we know that it does affect our LGBT community also. And even you know, like you were saying, if people do get married, they're going to have this long wait, you know, before they can get their immigration status and and uh, and get their citizenship. So I think we've got to work a lot closer on some of these major issues that affect women and that affect immigrants. Mm -hmm. and, and I, I'm thinking also, you know, that maybe one way is to hear what it hurts, right? It seems that one of the strategies that worked in Arizona was the the the, um, the economic portion of it, you know, the, right. the threat of, you know, we're gonna use our wallets to express our opinion. So I think that's very powerful. Um, so let, let's talk about because I, I see that we're not we don't have a lot of time left. Uh, and I want to make sure that I cover uh, at least most of the bases here. Um, let's talk a little bit about health. Um, we know that there's been a long history of bias against the LGBTQ community in the in the healthcare system. In fact, you know, I, until 73, 1973, homosexuality was considered a mental illness. Um, you know, and, and people were treated as as people um, who were mentally ill. So. The attitudes have changed uh, a little bit, as we as we have mentioned before. But there's still reports of stigma and discrimination in, in hospitals when people disclose their their sexual orientation or their gender identity uh, to their providers. So, um, do you feel that any progress has been made in this area? In in 
uh, will the Affordable Care Act help in any way? Um, what do you think? Well, I think we have, well, we have to get people to sign up. <laughs> you know, we have a lot of our Latino community there. I, mean, I was just doing a commercial uh, in Los Angeles, and in fact, today here in our office, we've got a group of young people that are being trained. We're going to be doing a big immersion campaign for the next four weekends here in our area to get the, especially young Latinos to sign up and uh, those that are not there. And it's unfortunate, like on many, on many issues, there's so much confusion out there. And they, the corporate media has told so many lies that people are just holding back and they're afraid to sign up for uh, for the uh, for Obamacare, uh, but I, I think that Obamacare will uh, be helpful uh, for our uh, LGBT community, like it is for everybody else. And uh, and and the, I think the other thing is we have to keep pushing for the uh, types of medications that people need if they do have HIV. One of my many arrests was uh, with ACT UP, which is a group in in San Francisco when we were trying to get uh, some of the um, medications to be more affordable. Uh, for people uh, that, that did have HIV. So uh, I think it will be helpful in the long run, uh, but again, we've got to make sure that people sign up and don't ignore it. Mm -hmm. And if I could just add to that, I think that it, it's important to think about um, the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare, not just as a, as a health care law, but as a civil rights law, right? Because for this, is, this has the possibility to transform the landscape in our community, in, both in communities of color and in the LGBT community. And I think about um, some of the specific benefits, right? So if you're LGBT, what it means is that you can't be denied coverage because of your sexual orientation or gender identity. And we hear so, so many times from people who are gay or transgender who've, been, who've gone to a provider and have been told, no, you, we won't serve you, or gone to an insurance company and have been told, no, we're not going to give you coverage. So that's one incredibly important benefit. I think um, the other one that I would, I would just highlight is that uh, you know, obviously there's not marriage equality everywhere in this country. I love your, you're showing the infographic, which is amazing. Um, we don't have marriage equality everywhere, but what we've been able to do is say from the federal government perspective that if you're applying um, for a for health care plan through the federal uh, marketplace, that will give you the, the benefits even if you're married. Say you get married in, in New York and then you move to Texas or you move to um, uh, Ohio, a non-marriage equality state, that we will give you the federal benefit for that. So that's also incredibly important. And I think it just it reminds us that um, you know in the LGBT community, one in four um, low-income LGBT people is uninsured. And so we've got to do a better job of, of telling folks why this matters to them. Um, I think there's a little bit of distrust in the community about what government can do and what uh, what hospitals and what doctors can do for them. And so we have to we have to get over that hump, and that requires a lot of people to do a lot of education. Yeah, it's certainly, you know, the, um, Obamacare, the, the Affordable Care Act is certainly going to help a lot in terms of access, um, in, which is the, very important. Uh, but uh, there's still a lot of work to be done in terms of the the attitude of the people within the the healthcare system, um, and and that's something that we have to work on too. There's, there's so many things that would need to be worked on. Um, so do you guys think that there's, a, you know, is there one issue that should take precedence over the other issues that, that um, people should be focusing the most energy on or, or are we okay the way that we've been going uh, now? Could I go back to could I go back to the healthcare just for a second? I think it would, uh, yes. uh, it, it would really be, be uh, definitely that each, all of the organizations that, uh, that work with LGBT um, communities uh, that they do the work of going and doing the outreach, uh, you know, to make sure that people do sign up. In Quality California, again, we've got all, all of our field organizers that are actually doing outreach and enrollments right now uh, for the Obamacare Act, uh, as we are with the Dolores Huerta Foundation. But I think that's got to be, uh, and the reason I'm saying right now, may, maybe you asked about priorities, in California at least, uh, and we, you know, we've, we've got the extension to March the 31st, and so we're making a very, very big push this month. Uh, to get people enrolled, so I think if people can get out, they get get that out there, and and all of the messaging that is made out there. Look, you've got this month to sign up, so you can be covered, you know, uh, next year. So people get get on board and sign up. And, uh, you know, we've been working for civil rights for 60 years, and it only takes you one hour to sign up. You know, <laughs> at, at the most, uh, it will take you an hour to sign up for uh, Obamacare. So you know, people shouldn't sit back and wait any longer. Now is the time to do it. And is I. That I have to remind people of the of the website. So healthcare.gov and cuidado de salud.gov. 
Yes. And here in California, it's CoveredCalifornia.com. Dot, dot, covered mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to be posting all of these resources, all of these links that you guys are, are giving out in some of the infographics that we've been sharing throughout the, the broadcast um, in, in, in a blog post later. And I'm going to be sharing it over Twitter and Facebook, obviously, uh, in, in Google+. Plus. Um, where can people go um, to, to find more help and resources? What, what are some of the, the places? You, you mentioned already Cloud the Salud and, and uh, healthcare.gov. What yeah, other well, resources? This is, uh, this is me, Sergio. Um, you, people can definitely go to Familia es Familia, the website. We have a great, um, great me talking points. We just released our 2014 brochure, an updated brochure. And that is meant as a guide for Latinos to use with their families to talk about LGBT issues. It's really great with some really great statistics, some great polling numbers, some great talking points. So um, please take a look. Um, please go to freedomtomarry.org um, for some more talking points around marriage. We have a great um, web. We just launched this great campaign, Southerners for the Freedom to Marry. Um, we know that in the South it's going to be a little bit more difficult to win the Freedom to Marry there. So we just launched a campaign there. Um, earlier this week with um, Congressman John Lewis as the co-chair and Representative Joaquin Castro from um, San Antonio, Texas. Um, so definitely take a look. Um, there's a lot of great things going on um, and I think, you know, help us help us win marriage in your state. <laughs> Any other resources we should know about? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll send you the uh, the phone number and the uh, the uh, internet uh, as soon as I can pull it up, uh, Ilian. But uh, can I just mention one other thing too? Uh, you know, uh, just in the news, it's been uh, uh, reported about what's happening in Uganda, uh, where they have actually the president signed a law uh, that gays and lesbians can actually go to prison. They can be put in jail. Before, I guess they were, he wanted to make a law where they could be killed, and uh, but he's kind of uh, altered that and said that they can go to prison. The president of Uganda has actually signed this, and I want to refer people to uh, Rachel Maddow, the Rachel Maddow show, who had a big uh, thing on this, and uh, Larry O'Donnell's show on MSNBC. MSNBC. Uh, but I think you know uh, one of the comments that came out of the White House was that they were going to revisit or relook at the kind of assistance that we give to Uganda. And I think uh, talking about economic sanctions, I would say that we should say uh, to our President Obama, you know what, cut them off. Cut off all the, any any kind of assistance that we give to that country. Cut it off completely uh, unless uh, they reverse the, that legislation that they passed and that the president signed. People shouldn't have to go to prison because uh, they're they're gay, lesbian, or transgender. Mm -hmm. And the you know whatever I think that whatever repercussions that that will have is you know if if we allow things like that to happen elsewhere in the world, how can we honestly protest against things like that here, right? Exactly. exactly. It's so all tax dollars that are going to Uganda. <laughs> it's all tax dollars. Um, so what can allies do um, to help advance the, the work that our um, LGBTQ you know, brothers and sisters are doing? What can, what can we do to help um, the community? Anyone? Well, One of the, oh. go ahead, Sergio. One of the main things that I would like to tell people is to actually speak up. Uh, when they see you know, something going on within their state legislature, within their local community, um, I think you know, all things start local. And um, it's very important that we speak up, you know, not just like, it's kind of important that we get out of our comfort zone and um, do things to help out others, look out for you know, others, your neighbor, not just yourself. Uh, when you see um, you know, your state government doing, you know, in Arizona, like doing something like that in Arizona, you know, a lot of people spoke up. And you know, a lot of people made phone calls, you know, talk to your family, talk to your church members um, about the importance of this issue and why you know, it's something that we should all you know, care about and we should all work on. Gautam, you were going to say something? No, I, I think he, he said it exactly right. I think speaking up is important. I think also asking questions when you don't know the answer to something is, is very important too. Um, you know, I think, uh, like I said earlier, I think there's a, a tendency to think that, that the movement is over now that we have, um, we have one great Supreme Court uh, decision under our belt. And so, you know, we've seen this, um, and, and Sergio is the expert here, but I, I know we've, we've seen this in the past of, 
um, what happens at the state level when um, the state gets to marriage equality, and then folks tend to forget about all the other work that's left to be done, whether it's bullying or employment non-discrimination or HIV. So I think the more that allies can keep uh, keep the eye on the ball, right? We want the full pie. We don't want just the one slice of it. So I think that's going to be incredibly important in the coming years. Mm -hmm. and I also think that we know that these right-wing organizations are going to be uh, going more to the local level, like they recently did in Albuquerque, New Mexico, on this uh, anti-abortion issue. And uh, we know that, they, so we have to really keep an eye on the local level, uh, you know, on the city level, on the state level, uh, because if they feel, well, basically that's what they're doing right now with, with all of these so-called religious freedom uh, pieces of legislation, you know, they're uh, introducing those all over the place. And if they can't win it at the state level, they're going to start going to cities. That's a that's a new tactic that they have. So uh, we just have to be, as you said, vigilant and be sure to, uh, to be able to speak out when these things happen. Mm -hmm. Especially, you know, in the upcoming elections, we tend not to come out to vote when when um, it's midterm elections and in those kind of things. So I think it's very important also that that we um, let our voices heard also at the polls um, when, it's, when it's time, right? So now, uh, and it's a shame that um, Laura is not here because um, I know that she she's very vocal about this kind of things, And but I'm going to try to get her, um, mm -hmm. her opinion on this for the written piece. Um, now I'm going to um, ask you the, the last question. What is the one message you want to leave with the community before you go? I think the message is be engaged, okay? Participate, you know, go out there, take action. Uh, everywhere we go, take the message out there. We've got to have equality uh, and anti-discrimination for anyone. And I just do want to mention that my daughter, Juanita uh, Ch uh, Chavez, is by and uh, she's been an advocate uh, when she was a teacher. Uh, you know, she made sure that uh, the young students knew, and especially when she was in Mission High School in San Francisco, that they set up a clinic. Uh, for our LGBT youth, so there was a place where they could come and they could be safe and they could talk about their issues. So it's incumbent upon each and every one of us that uh, we, you know we carry the message and we do as much as that we can, and and support organizations uh, that that cater to and that service and that advocate for our LGBT community and, and be one of them. You know, all of us are in, in this together. Somos todos una familia, right? I think that's our our mantra and our message that we have to carry everywhere we go. Beautiful, beautiful. Anybody else? I would say, um, uh, sorry, Gosa. Um, I would say, you know, um, vamos a trunpa. Um, I certainly believe that we're going to win um, wholeheartedly. You know, we're on the right side um, on these issues. And, you know, as long as we keep, you know, luchando, um, we'll get there. Uh, but I always, like to, I always like to tell people, too, like, la lucha nunca se acaba, which is like the fight never ends, you know. There's always something to fight for. We can always do better, and we should demand better of ourselves and our government. Um, so that would, that would be my saying. Keep on the fight. <laughs> and you know, I would just I would just add that that our success is going to be based on on our ability to work in coalition, right? Because there's just too much to work to do for us to do it on our own. Um, and so I think when we have, uh, L especially with LGBT communities of color, that we we are sort of naturally predisposed to, to, to bring people together. Um, and I think that's going to be incredibly important. We just we can't do it on our own. And I think that means that, uh, that when other folks show up for our fights, that we show up for theirs as well. So um, you know, this is the start of, of, a, of a movement and of bringing people together. And I, I hope that continues. Mm -hmm. And how do we tell our family members who are not quite there yet? Because that's a, a, an important part as well of what needs to happen, um, what, what would be something you, you would say to the family members that need to understand about um, gay rights? I, I would continue to have those conversations with the family members. Don't give up on your family, um, even though they might be very hostile towards LGBT rights. I have heard some of the most heartwarming stories where it took like 20 years for someone's parents to come around and finally you know, support um, you know, their gay son or their gay daughter. Um, it does take a while, but definitely, you know, it is your family. You shouldn't give up. Uh, and just always, you know, have those conversations and, you know, share your personal stories. And, you know, hopefully they, they come around. No, I think that's right. I think um, a lot of patience and love will eventually win the day. 
And I think we should also participate. Yeah, we should participate in that. Like, if we have gay pride parades, you know, make sure we have a, a large Latino contingent in that. And not that everybody, I mean, I have been in many gay pride parades, and of course, I'm a straight ally. Uh, but, uh, you know, to show people that we're there, uh, you know, support, uh, be supportive, and, and not just being supportive, but participating. We have to participate. We, we've got to be active uh, in, in our communities, uh, you know, our LGBT communities. and. And uh, any way we can do to promote uh, our folks, uh, we have to we have to do that. And not only on the local level, on the national level, and yes, on the international level, because uh, many of us Latinos know that, uh, and unfortunately, in other countries uh, of Latin America, that you know we still have a lot of, uh, of legal discrimination. I'm talking about Uganda, but hey, wait a minute, we can look in our backyard over here and see that you know we still have a lot of discrimination. And it's interesting because I remember growing up as a young a teenager going to Mexico, and uh, it, the atmosphere was so different. It was very protective of LGBT uh, people, and then somehow it switched because we know that we've got these people that are uh, promoting hatred, and they do it uh, for political purposes, and they do it to be divisive, and and you know, so you know, we've, we've got to counter that through organization. And I and I do want to give you those numbers, uh, Ilian, for for Obamacare in California. Can I give them to you now, or do you want to give them to give you later? No, 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 you can do it, you can do it. Okay, well, for the Spanish, uh, for Obamacare, it's uh, 800-300-0213. That's for Spanish, and it's colored, covered, uh, ca.com. And for English, it's 1-800-300-1506. 1-800-300-1506. And we have to say, ahora es cuando, don't put it off anymore. Si se puede, we can do it, okay? We can do sign up, okay? <laughs> and on that note, I want to thank um, so much all of our panelists for being here, Dolores and Gautam and Sergio and Laura, who was, um, I don't know what happened, but she somehow dropped off. Um, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to speak to us about this, but also for the amazing work that you do out there in the community. Um, you know, it's been, it's been such an honor to have all of you because I know all of you personally and I know how hard you work for this community every single day. Um, I want to also thank you um, to, to the, our viewers um, for being here, for taking the time to watch this broadcast. I hope that the information that we're sharing here is, is being useful. I'm going to uh, close with um, a link to the to where you can find this broadcast again if you want to review it, if you want to share it with other people mm -hmm. after we are done. Um, and if you missed any part of it, you can watch it from the beginning. I do apologize for the a little craziness that we had in the beginning there. Uh, but we, we cut our stride after. And um, thank you so much, everyone, for watching. And I will see you next time. Have a great night. And don't forget to web up. Gracias. Si se puede. Thank you. Muchas gracias. Bye. Ciao. Ciao.